you know, for the longest time, I didn't know what odd numbers and even numbers were. <laughs> I didn't know which ones were which. <laughs> no. Do you, did you know? Yeah. Wow. You're clever, mm. hey? Do you know what a prime number is? A prime number? No. I've heard that before. What's a prime number? <laughs> you don't know either. <laughs> it's... I remember for prime numbers, like, three, seven. Ah, oh, yeah. Like, three, seven, eleven. So much stuff like from that. school, I don't remember. Mm. Like, I did an engineering diploma, and I f- could figure out, like, the stopping distance of a train and shit <laughs> like that. And as I was learning, I was like, fuck, when is this going to play a part in my life? When you're about to be hit by a train. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, shit, I need to get out of the way. (laughs) Welcome back to the Relationship Mentors Podcast. We are on episode 13. And today we're going over five steps to instantly become a better girlfriend. And I think this is a good topic to speak on as I feel like you do a really good job of it. And it sounds pretty privileged. Like Sometimes I can't remember what it's like to be in a bad relationship. Mm. Even and making content and stuff, sorry to cut you off. Okay. Like being in, making content and putting myself in the shoes of relationships who have these struggles. Like we really wanted to help relationships. And I find that a challenge sometimes. I know this sounds like privilege or something. Like sometimes I struggle to relate to them unless I do client calls and really hear the nitty gritty of what's going on. Yeah. And it's, I also do like, I feel what you're feeling and get what you're trying to say. And I don't believe it's privilege. It's simply the fact of, that we know the tools. It's like we put in the effort to learn the tools and that's what we're helping others do as well. Mm. Even when we got together, it's like we've had poor relationships in the past. Yeah. And being through the phases, being single, done a lot of personal development, learned all the stuff. And then coming together, it's like felt easy. 100%. And it's like, I think that's the part what makes us such great relationship coaches like if we had only ever had great relationships it's like would we even be that relatable Mm. or it's like I wouldn't know how to resonate with other people if I hadn't didn't have the past relationships that I had Mm. and there's been a lot of past relationships that I feel like every single relationship I've ever been in has always been a completely different dynamic completely different which I think is great because now when I look back I'm like oh there's so many points that I can actually make sense of in, yeah and looking, other people are going through it mm, and looking sense? back at past relationships I always say if you don't if you aren't slightly embarrassed or cringe about the past version of you like in past relationships or you a year ago you two years ago like me even looking at content from a year ago I'm like slightly embarrassed and that's such a good thing <laughs> it shows you're improving it shows you're getting better yeah it shows that you're putting yourself out there to want to improve. Like it shows that you're looking back Mm. at your old self to improve your current and future self. Yeah. And this is what's so great about doing this work and getting people the tools around relationships. Cause I thoroughly believe like your relationship gets to be the biggest launch pad for success. Mm. Like I've never, like I've been working on myself for a long time and then I've experienced more growth and more success in the last two years of being in a relationship with Mia than I have ever before. So it's like, I had a limiting belief that if I was in a relationship, it would slow me down. I was so obsessed with personal growth and getting better and building a business and building a brand. And I was like, if I get in a relationship, that's going to slow that down. So I had to choose between being the best version of myself or being in a relationship. That was my limiting belief before. Isn't it so interesting? It's like, and so many people out there will have this, not even just in a relationship, but it's like, I want these two things, but I have to I have this or this. I can't have both of them. And that's the biggest thing is like, you can have both of them. It's just figuring out what that looks like. Mm, absolutely. So a little catch up from the week, Mia Cherry. Before, um, before the podcast, we're going to go like, okay, we're going to go over the challenges from the week. Have you got one? Mia's like, I've got a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so many. <laughs> Kick it off. Um, so we're just going over a catch up or what's bothered yeah. me this week? What's bothered you this week? I feel like we'll just go into, I, I believe this is so interesting to like hear the insides of other people's relationships. Yeah. I feel like the biggest like pet peeve that I've had this week that's really been addressed and Charlie was like, don't tell me until the podcast. It's so <laughs> interesting to see what you'll say. That is the fact that it's like when I ask a question, only sometimes it gets answered, but it's like a really a massive pet peeve of mine is when I ask a question and then it's not answered. Mm. It's like, I'll ask you a question. For example, I was like, oh, why didn't you 
move the couch to where it normally goes for the podcast, for example. And then instead of answering, he just moves the couch, looks at it and then starts moving everything around. I'm like, I didn't say you had to move it. I just asked, like, was there a reason behind it? And then even after I said that, you didn't answer. You just kept moving everything. Yeah, because I didn't answer first of all. (laughs) I just wanted to fix the problem. Like I went. But super... I didn't think I didn't say it was a problem. I was just I know. curious. <laughs> so yeah. I'm like, why I did... was like, all right, the couch is in the wrong position. I'll move it. Like that was what went on in my head. And then after you, like, I just want an answer. And then I was like, fuck her. I don't want to give her an answer. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it was, like I didn't think it was a bad thing at all. I was just like, oh, why did you move the couch? Like, why, why did you move the couch? Mm, something. Um, that's a good point. In men's heads, a lot of the time. Like I speak to a lot of couples and it's like the woman doesn't get an answer out of the man or the man shuts down. A lot of time for men, it's like they beat themselves up about what they didn't do. So if a woman picks up on it, a lot of the time the man's like, oh, fuck, I'm such an idiot. Like, why did I do that? Like, that's the inner narrative for a lot of men. Yeah. And even when you asked that this morning, like a part of me was like, oh, fuck, I forgot to do that. I beat myself mm-hmm. up a little bit. Like I didn't meet my standards that I hold myself to. So that came up. So I don't want to answer you. I just want to fix a thing to move past it. Like that, that went on in my head. Yeah. And that's so interesting because I thought like to me, it wasn't a big deal. It was simply like, why don't you move the couch? Obviously it will still look <laughs> the same. Like it's not a big deal. Yeah. Um, and it was just so interesting that for you not to answer it or get defensive or by the sounds of it in your head got defensive. But like if I had a problem with it and thought it was in the wrong place, mm. I would tell you that. But my question wasn't that. Like yeah. I was asking you a question and I feel like I'm very honest and very clear in the questions that I ask. Mm. And sometimes I'll ask you a question about like work or just about a certain topic. And then you'll talk about something else of like you make a preconceived notion notion on what the question is that I'm actually asking. Yeah. But I'm actually asking the exact question I am asking. Like people... Yeah, believe- I change the question. Like you ask a question and then I hear something else. Yeah. And it's like, you're responsible for what you say, not what I hear. Exactly. And it's like, sometimes the question can be (laughs) between (laughs) leaving your mouth and entering my ears. Like I hear something different sometimes. Mm. And we really break this down in our conflict codes course, like the breakup. Miscommunication. Yeah. Miscommunication. We go over a whole diagram of what happens inside one person's brain and then the words and the dialogue that they use to go to the other person. The journey between. And then the journey between like all what the words go through before they even get to the other person's ears, for example. So that dialogue and that journey is really interesting to look at. Mm. But so interesting, like we know all this stuff and it just comes up in our relationship in different aspects. And that's something that's happened a lot this week that I'm just so over asking questions and then it just doesn't get answered. Like, okay. Yeah, that's something I wasn't great at at the start. Um, I just like, obviously I've heard what you said. Like that went on in my head a little bit in the start of the relationship. Like you'd ask something or you'd make a statement and I'm just like, I've heard it. And I didn't know I needed to answer a lot of the time at the start of the relationship. <laughs> yeah. So it wasn't my pattern. I was just like, you said something. And in my head, I was like, got it. But you needed to know I got it. Otherwise, you'd feel ignored. So it's like remembering to answer you every single time. Mm. And it's something to get used to. It's so funny because you'd be like, just imagine you're having a conversation with someone. Then you say something just... And I don't know if it's just a woman's point of view of how we have conversations or a conversation is like, I shouldn't have to ask you a question. I just... We're talking about a certain topic and then Charlie will just stop and just... (laughs) <laughs> and that's it, Michael. Watch us. Yeah, it's just like oh, I thought we were in the mid- middle of a conversation, but <laughs> it's like okay, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, like Charlie just doesn't share when he's at the end of a conversation. He's just yeah, you never know when the end of a conversation yeah, you is. Just stop. Or sometimes you've come to me to ask for like my opinion or my advice on something. Yeah, and I'm sharing that, and then suddenly... I just walk off because I'm like I've got what I want. Yeah, it was and I just walk sometimes... off I'm like that's so helpful. I've got what I want, yeah. but then you're still left like. Fucking hell, it's a conversation over here, I right? I think this happened this week and you were on the couch. I was like, oh, I want to ask you, uh, said to me, it's like, oh, I want to ask you a question about this. Like, what are your thoughts on this, this and this? And so you started sharing that with me. And then I shared my opinion and my thoughts. And then you're like, mm, 
and then it's <laughs> <just> like, <laughs> like oh, are we done did you get what you needed <laughs> like yeah so it's just like sometimes <laughs> your brain just like <laughs> uh that's funny yeah did you have another annoyance from the week um i don't remember what it is now however that was definitely the main one yeah that's funny and it's not Sorry to interrupt there, but like it's not a massive, massive issue. It's just something that annoys me because <laughs> I get we are with each other a lot of the time. So we ask each other a lot of questions and it's not every question, but it's just enough throughout the week for me to be like, I've got two, answer me. I got a lot of pet peeves about Mia as well. Like just tiny things. Number one. <laughs> First off, did you try and think of them when I was like, I have so many of you. Yeah. Were you in the room? Being like, I've got ammunition now. <laughs> Um, so when Mia uses the microwave Mm. and we need to heat something up for like 90 seconds or two minutes, she will press that go button until it hits like 10, 12 minutes. And I'm just like, what if you forget about it? She's like, oh, I won't forget about it. I'm like, but you could forget about it. So instead of putting on for like, if something needs warming up for two minutes, put it on for two minutes, not 12 minutes. And hopefully you remember, like, why do you do that? I love, I thought I was going to get offended for whatever you said, but no, the microwave thing is one of my pet peeves. So I hate the sound of the ding. So I hate... So you make sure you're nowhere yeah. near. And it's You'd like rather it's... the house burn down than hear a ding. But the thing is like, I'm in the kitchen. I'm still at the microwave. Normally I am cooking certain things. Or like I'm still in the kitchen and I'm in the presence. Like I'm not going to forget about it. It's like, I know when I put the microwave on, I'm not going, it's not something I'm going to forget about. Yeah, right. Just because you have a problem maybe with forgetting to, that you have things in the microwave. No, doesn't not at mean all. I have a problem with th- forgetting things in the microwave. And another pet peeve. When you, <laughs> you, have, you have You put the smallest things in massive pockets. Like if we have an AirPod case, Mia will put it in the biggest pocket of the backpack. <laughs> like little things belong in small pockets. Like if you've got earphones or something, it's in the front pocket, the small pocket. So you know exactly where it is. Mia will throw AirPods in with the towel and the food and whatever it is there. So I, what I have re- am realizing from this is that we just have different strategies with things. It's like for me, I can, it's like if we're going to the beach, for example, it's like, okay, we have a backpack. We are wanting towels. We're wanting water. We're wanting AirPods. Maybe and a, a phone, book and stuff. Yeah, a book. But it's like if I'm, if I know that we're just leaving our house to go to a location and this moment we get to that location I'm wanting all of these things at once and it's only five minutes apart like okay it's more convenient and more time efficient to put everything in one pocket so then when I get to the beach when I get to the cafe all I have to do is unzip one pocket and take out everything that I want like I don't want to have to unzip zip unzip zip like you put things in so many different pockets and then, then I you know forget about them. No, you forget about them. No, I don't. You have like you seven You lose things pens. more than me. I lose my AirPods. That's the only thing that I <laughs> <You> lose. <laughs> Mia loses her AirPods every other day. Yeah, I used to have two pairs because I would lose one and then just use the other one. Then when I'd lose that, I would find the other one. But now I've just lost one you'd, pair. You'd so fluctuate between two AirPods, like two pairs of AirPods and zero. Because mm-hmm. you had one, you lost it. So you bought another pair but you found the original pair, then you lost a, a pair and then you lose the other pair. So you like, you fluctuate between zero and two. Yeah. So now I only have one pair, but I drop them on the ground a lot. But that's the only thing that I lose. You just have like eight pens in your bag all the time. Oh, look at pens now. <laughs> <laughs> the pens. This is a good takeaway for whoever's listening and you're in a relationship and the little annoyances that build up, but like the tiniest things can annoy you. And it's like, can you turn it into something you can have a laugh about? Can you actually bring it up if it annoys you? Like me with the, when I don't answer the question, I'm just like, cool, got it. And I just walk off. Like the conversation's complete in my head, but in Mia's head, she's like, what the fuck? I'm so left in the dark. Like, are you finished? Are you done? Anything else you want? Yeah. Like you haven't communicated with me. Yeah. It's like, bring that up. And it still happens a little bit now. So it's just like, cool. It's still in my awareness. I'm working on it, improving it. I I've got like, way better with it, hey. Yeah, I feel like we could do a whole episode on pet peeves. It's like, I'm thinking of more now. <laughs> yeah, I've got so many. Cool. We'll save those 2 a.m. Um, we don't want to change the whole episode. <laughs> <laughs> You've got so many right now. No, we'll keep going with this okay. episode. They've had a, a test, like a tra- <laughs> the trailer to the pet peeves. Yeah, I've got so many in my pocket too. 
Yeah, well, you? those two things, I was like, they're not an issue to me, so I'm never changing them. <laughs> cool. What if um, not answering you wasn't an issue for me? <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Felicia. Bye. Okay, cool. so let's get into it. So as we said before, today's topic is five steps to instantly become a better girlfriend. Mm, this is so important. A lot of women don't understand men and a lot of men don't understand women. Mm. And a lot of people don't understand themselves fully. Oof, dropping that on it. Mm. So it's so important to know what's going on in a man's head, what he needs. Because so often men don't know how to communicate what they need. They don't understand like... A lot of women like, why the fuck does he act like this? Why is he like this? Why is my boyfriend so dumb? Why is my boyfriend so unaware? Whereas men can be like, oh, why is my girlfriend so sensitive? Why is my girlfriend so at me all the time? So angry all the time. It's like understanding. You can't hate and understand someone at the same time. And especially your partner. If you hate your partner, it's because you don't understand them. If you understood why they did what they did, and then you could accommodate for that and really get used to it and learn each other then you'd stop hating the other partner and resentment wouldn't build up right that's such a big issue in relationships like resentment builds up and builds up under the surface and all of a sudden like they haven't had sex in six months there's no wonder because you're so angry at him or angry at her that how are you going to be turned on by each other Mm, exactly okay cool number one is make him feel useful so i feel like overall a lot of the time men just want to feel like they are useful being in his masculine energy masculinity just wants to show their competence and how they're able to provide how they're able to do this how they're able to make you happy and solve your problems so number one is to make him feel useful why that is is because it's like if you simply want help opening the jar even if you could open the jar even if you could move the couch wouldn't it just be easier on your life if you just simply asked him to do it and it will make him feel more in his masculine energy and be like yes I'm like of course like oh yeah she needs me I can open this jar mm. it makes gives him a sense of purpose and importance a level of importance within the relationship mm, so important and there's even a study about depression in men over the years and how back in the war days, like when World War One and World War Two was happening, depression in men was very low for the people that went to war. Like there was a lot of different things, like terrible things that have happened, like PTSD. I'm not talking about that. I'm simply talking about depression. But when men got called up to war and they found that they had such a purpose, like this is my purpose. I'm giving my all to this. This is something to focus on. This is something that I can provide. I can feel capable in. I can feel useful in a lot of the depression disappeared. Like it wasn't such a thing back then, but they're saying like mental health is such a thing now because a lot of men, they haven't got this main thing to focus on. When they get into their 20s, they're like, I don't know what to focus on now. I don't know what makes me feel capable. I'm just surrounded by all these distractions. I've got so much potential inside me that I'm not using. Mm -hmm. And then they just feel like they just float around aimlessly. And that's why so many mental health things are happening now. But even in your relationship, you can make him feel so useful. You can give him so much purpose. Even when Mia um, is leaving the car and she's just been shopping or we've just been shopping, like I will always carry the things. I will always, and that makes me feel so good. Like it physically helps Mia and it mentally helps me. Like I feel so useful when I can carry the shopping for her, when I can carry her bags, when I can, I don't get your door much, but (laughs) when I can (laughs) do those things. And you were so... um, yeah, you're so not used to that, like the basic chivalry stuff. But that just makes me feel so good. Yeah, it's like I've definitely been in relationships before where I would feel guilt if someone was to do something for me. Mm. It's like, I can do this myself. I can carry all these bags. I can do this and I can do that. Like, I don't need your help. Even if other people like offered at some point. So I'm like, no, 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 it's fine. Like I can carry, I can do it myself. Then even when they did do it, I didn't accept it because I felt so much guilt for allowing them to do that and then getting in a relationship with Charlie and actually allowing him to do that for me. It helped me go more into my femininity and allow myself to receive. Mm. And there is such power in women. Like the femininity doesn't get power in being able to do everything and not needing help. The power comes in being able to receive, Mm. being able to receive help. And that's how you work together in the relationship. So basic things like, 
when Mia wants me to ask me to park the car and I park the car. Fuck, that makes me feel like a hero. When Mia once walks up to me and asks me to open a jar, like that makes me feel so great. When I can carry her bags upstairs, like that makes me feel great. If I pay for a date, like that makes me feel so great. So a woman being able to receive is so, so important because it makes the man feel great. Like if you go on a date and you refuse to let the man pay, like, no, 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 that means he's overpowering me. He's this, he's that. It's like, nah, that just stops him from being able to feel great. Yeah. And it's talking about before, it's like, you're not there giving your man his whole purpose. Like that's up to him to have his own purpose. Mm. However, it's you being, can help. yeah, to make him feel useful. Will, will, it's just those little moments which will help remind him how useful and how much he does for the relationship. Mm, self-esteem is so important. Yeah. Like make him feel like he's doing a good job. A man wants to know he's doing a good job in a relationship. Like that is the crux of it. He wants feedback that he's doing a good job, that he's a good boyfriend. But a lot of time, it's so easy for women and men, but we're talking about women here, easy for women to criticize the bad and never praise the good. You can get so used to the good mm. that you spot the 1% of what's going bad and you really dial in on that. Like even in our relationship, sometimes if we're arguing and stuff, we can really focus on the 1% of fuck, this is like, I don't feel loved now. I don't feel this. I don't feel that. Like, and sometimes I can feel like, oh God, I'm not doing a good job as a boyfriend. But it's actually like the 99% is great. So it's like, yeah. can you praise the 99% that's going great and not just criticize the 1% that's going bad? Exactly. And then like with all the steps that we have written down, all of this, like we said, how to instantly become a better girlfriend, all these steps are what you can do to more so make him feel great because the more that he feels great and the more that he realizes oh, like I'm a great boyfriend, also makes him want to be around you more because when he is around you, he feels great. Mm. And we'll dive into that through some of the other steps that we go over. Yeah, but. it's such a team dynamic. Like the number one thing we teach couples is you're a team, work together. It's not you versus him. It's mm. you're in this together. You're working on the relationship together. You're not having a go at him. Stop trying to fix him. Stop trying to fix her. You work together to fix the relationship. And that brings you so much joy then like our relationship is such a such a place of support and joy and love and success like it's great having that as your base in your life so much fulfillment comes from that than any other area of my life I know like I'm so excited to work on my physical health I'm so excited to work on my business and my social life and all these other areas and my faith because I know my relationship is so so strong and that's a launch pad for every other area mm, it's such it's such a secure base to go off in every other area in life. It's like when you know that you have one solid base foundation that no matter what, it's not going to be rocked. Mm. It just allows you to thrive in other areas as well. Mm. We're then moving on to step number two, which is give him compliments. So something that we see happen a lot just in social media is very much of like girls wanting to receive compliments in it's like, do I look great? Like you've done your hair, you've done your nails, you've put yourself together. However, something that we do forget a lot about is men and giving them compliments. Men love compliments just as much as women do. They just don't express it and communicate it nearly as much. Yeah, they're not as aware. And I got, I was on a coaching call yesterday with a client and um, it was a gay male couple and he was like, my boyfriend loves compliments. Like he's really good looking. I tell him he's good looking when like sometimes, but when I don't feel like complimenting him, I won't. And most of the time there's so much anger under the surface. Like there's so much resentment built up that he doesn't want to give him compliments. And in turn, his partner doesn't feel loved because he's not having compliments. So he's not going to be a great boyfriend. So he doesn't want to give him compliments. And it's such a deadly cycle. It's like someone needs to break the cycle. The most self-aware person in the relationship has to be the one that steps up and makes the change. Because if you're constantly waiting for your boyfriend, like I'm not giving him compliments because he doesn't make me feel loved. He doesn't make me feel heard. He doesn't make me feel understood. Maybe if you gave him compliments, he'd start acting like a better boyfriend. He'd start being more of the boyfriend you fell in love with rather than the, the man you have now, right? Yeah, and it's just such a cycle of if you make him feel great, it's like what we were saying before, it's like if I make you feel great in return, 
And one that makes me already feel great if I make mm. you feel great. But it's like in return, because I've made you feel great, you will naturally want to make me feel great as well. Yeah. It's, it's like a cycle of of it's like, oh, you did this for me. I I want to do this for you. It's not the expectation of I've done this for you, so you need to do this for me. It's just a pure it's like just so much love and pure pureness of like I'll do this for you because you're so important you should know how amazing you are Mm. and how handsome you are and like giving you all these compliments because it will naturally make you feel great and in return you will show me that with happiness and the way that you treat me or you'll show me that in another way within the relationship yeah when Mia randomly walks up to me in the day and just gives me a hug like oh you're so handsome and she's just like (laughs) it's so lovey-dovey in that like you just Mm. ooze love so much and it's like the reason you do that is because I make you feel loved but then when you do that you make me feel loved even more and it's just Mm. back and forth back and forth it's like someone needs to break the cycle in that and yeah when I feel like shit if I don't feel appreciated in a relationship I don't really want to butt out and like I don't feel turned on I don't feel appreciated I don't feel like I want to give you compliments I don't want to spend time with you Mm. like if my if me ever makes me feel like if like if we have an argument sometimes I sometimes I just want my distance and if that plays out if we didn't have the tools to come back together I could easily hold on to that turns into resentment I don't want to be a good boyfriend like I have this anger built up inside me of no she should suffer as well <laughs> like she should feel like shit as well so I'm not going to give her compliments like this plays out so much it's like yeah. I don't feel loved so I'm not going to make him feel loved yeah <laughs> and that's definitely like playing out in that situation and it happens so often a great example would be right at the beginning of this podcast where it's like we started off the podcast doing the complete opposite of giving each other compliments we were like i'm telling you my pet peeves and as soon as it started as soon as i shared one of mine you had ammunition to share (laughs) others and then the more that you were saying i'm like yeah i have more to say it's like it was just fueling that and it's like i feel like we say it out of like love and playfulness for sure Mm. however it's like it definitely had that ammunition of like oh yeah like well i'll tell you what i don't like about you Mm. it's just like fueling that negative conversation that environment so so a practical tip on this if you're a woman listen to this and you want to compliment your man so it's like make him feel capable oh like thank you for all you do in business thank you for going out and working every day thank you for being such a great dad thank you for making me feel loved oh thank you for making dinner today thank you for being so focused on what you're doing yes something that i find works really well it's like since you are in a relationship with him you do know what his insecurities are you know at some level what his insecurities are and what i think is always really great is Mm. give him compliments on that like if he's really insecure about if he has acne on his face for example i feel like this is more of a young (laughs) idea i just couldn't think of anything but like you would go and say he like a couple days later after he's mentioned his insecurities like oh babe like your face is so gorgeous like your features on your face are so lovely like your Mm. eyes are so beautiful i can't wait to have babies with you and genetics and stuff like that yeah it's like make him feel so great about those insecurities because those are the things that really plays on someone's mind like deeply in their mind because if they've shared an insecurity with you once chances are they probably think about it a whole lot more than they ever mention it exactly and it helps them like one of my insecurities growing up was being skinny. So I always went to the gym and I, I really struggle with losing weight so fast. So I have to eat a lot of food to put weight on. And then I've been going to the gym and I was on like a good spell of going to the gym. And Mia's just so aware of like complimenting me like, oh, baby, <laughs> your arms look so big. <laughs> like you, I purposely didn't use that as, as an example because I didn't know if you were yeah. comfortable sharing. Yeah, oh, you look great. You, you're really putting on weight. Like you're looking way better. Like, wow, you're looking so strong now. I'm just like, oh, that makes me feel so good because that was an insecurity of mine. Yeah, and I never said you're looking way better. I always would say it's like, oh, like, hey, I personally, to me, you've always seemed really fit. But now that you've addressed it, it's like, oh, I can really see it's like how much more muscle you're having now, Mm. now that you're eating this this so much and like you're going (laughs) to the gym so much and you're having these like protein supplement stuff. Like it's really, can really tell. Yeah. So so it's it's like, like reinforcing that great behavior as well yeah whatever you know your partner's insecurity is compliment them on the opposite like make them feel loved if your woman is insecure about her body say oh babe i love when you're naked like i love seeing you you're so beautiful oh you're like a goddess 
like I love your curves I love your this that and the other <laughs> it's like compliment them on the thing you think they're insecure about <laughs> Well, <laughs> I can just see you coming up to me he's like, babe, I just love your curves. And me being like, what curves? Yeah, fuck <laughs> off. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so then moving on to step number three, which is ask for his opinion. So this goes back to a man in his masculine energy is wanting to show his competence. Like he wants to show you, he wants to be the knight in shining armor and will rescue you from from any problem that you have any thoughts that you're having um he would love to like, give you advice like you hear it a lot when it's like you are talking to your partner uh, like venting to your partner about the problems that you have even if you have an ask for a solution he a lot of the time men will naturally give you a solution because he wants to show you that he can fix your problems so it's like when you actually genuinely have a question that you want to ask him him ask for his opinion because it'll allow him to step into that energy of showing you his competence Mm, such a great point so many men want to fix the relationship fix the issue straight away whenever the woman expresses something a lot of time women just want to feel heard but the man will go to instantly trying to fix solve the problem work out who's to blame work out what to do now And that's the wrong thing to do a lot of the time. But when you genuinely want help from your man, instead of making him guess, actually ask for his opinion. Like, hey, babe, I'm currently struggling with this. Like, I'd love your opinion on this. What do you think I can do about this? Oh, like, Jess has asked me to go out for breakfast, but I don't feel like I want to, but I don't want to feel mean. It's like, what what would you think? Like, what could I do about this? Just basic things like that. Yeah. Makes him feel useful. Like, he wants to help you. He wants to feel capable. So when you ask for his opinion and he gives you your opinion, like that makes him feel great. Yeah. Excellent. Amazing. Yeah. That's a short one. So ask for his opinion whenever you need help, make him feel useful by actually helping. Number four, realize he is single focused. Was this an annoyance at the start of the relationship or something that you've noticed? This is something that I didn't realize until I learned it, for example. It's like when I learned that men are single focused and women, men are naturally single focused and women naturally aren't. That was a massive like revelation (laughs) for me. Like that makes so much sense. It was like before this, like before learning that through like the education that we've done, I didn't fully realize it, but now that I know that it makes so much sense. And we've spoken about it in other podcasts. However, men focus on exactly what they're doing right now. It's like Charlie is focusing right now on doing the podcast. And then after the podcast, he's going to think about editing it. Then he's going to think about work or his client meetings after this. But with each task, it is just full. I am doing this 100% yeah, right now. It is funnel. Oh. Funnel vision? Tunnel Tunnel, vision. Funnel. Funnel. Yeah. Tunnel vision of it's solely like blinders on, not looking at anything else. Like this is what he is focusing on and he's getting it done. So. Are you thinking about like 50 other things right now? Yeah. And it's like (laughs) women will naturally think of so many different things all at once. And. What are you thinking about right now? (laughs) Other than the podcast. Well, now I just thrown off over all because I'm just thinking about <laughs> maybe now right now I have tunnel vision of oh she's in a masculine <laughs> <laughs> okay so then with the single focus this is something that it's important for you to realize this and why this is one of the steps on how to become a better girlfriend is because such a common thing in a common argument that we hear within a relationship is that the lady will ask the man a question And out of the blue, like he could be watching TV, he could be playing video games, he could be working, he could be cooking dinner and a lady can kind of just come up and ask him a question out of the blue without grasping his full attention first. Like if he's doing something else, when you ask him a question, he is not present in that moment because he is present with whatever he's doing in that exact time. Mm. So that's why it's so important to realize that he's single focused. So when you can see that he's doing anything else, other than if you're not in the midst of the conversation to get his attention first and be like, Hey, can I, can I ask you a question? So then his focused is then focused on you and not his cooking, his work, his video game. Yeah. It takes longer for him to switch tasks. Yeah. It's like switching railroads. 
like when you need to move the tracks onto another line. It's like, it's going to take a little bit. It's going to be a transition period and men need this transition period. Like if your man comes home and he, he's arriving home from work and it's been stressful, like that man could need a cool down period to really transition into the next thing, to go from businessman to family man. Like there's going to be a transition period there. And it's the same in every single task. Like if he's on his laptop, if he's sorting out something, if he's phoning the electricity company to sort out the bills, and then you ask him about something about parenting or something about dinner, like he could not answer you or he could take a while to refocus and answer your question. And can you be patient with that? Can you, this is the biggest caveat to the single focus thing is patience. Like the greatest gift women can give men is patience. When you can be patient with him, that makes him feel so loved. Like the last thing men want is an angry girlfriend. He wants peace in that relationship. So when you can be patient with him, when you can learn how he operates, when you can work together and actually give him peace, then you'll probably feel more loved in the relationship. Yeah. And another example as well is it's not just when he's doing something else. Sometimes it's even within the conversation if you're switching topics too much, because as women, since we can think of so many different things at once, we can change the topic within a conversation really quickly. And then we can jump back and forth, back and forth about different topics. However, since men are single focused, if he's thinking only about that one question about, for example, parenting, maybe what's for dinner isn't what's right on his mind because you're thinking about parenting and what you're going to talk about with the kids and doing this and X, Y, Z. So it's like even within the conversations that you're having with him, make sure that you're completing that one topic and then being like, hey, okay, let's act- let's talk about dinner now and then ask the question. Like be super clear on the transition within the conversation with men just so they can then get to the level that you're at because you're already, I know that you're already thinking about all these five different questions, about five different topics that you need to talk and discuss with him. Sometimes you'd be like, fucking hell hurry up come on answer the question but he's thinking he's getting into his feelings like especially me a lot of the time I feel into decisions and it takes me way longer to make decisions whereas me is super visual so she's just like boom bing 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 answers everywhere I know what to do yeah I feel like that's like the biggest thing that I've learned the biggest thing I've learned in our relationship is stepping more into my feminine energy and allowing to receive that would be the biggest thing but then the other big thing would be patience of like learning that. Yeah, because that was my biggest trigger. We'd have relationship check-ins. It's like, what can I do this week to make you feel loved? I was like, honestly, just be patient. And the little bits of patience just makes me feel so loved. And that's a big realization I had. Is like, I, I value patience so much. And when you're patient with me, I make you feel so much more loved because I feel loved in that. Yeah, and it's like something that helped me be more patient is realizing that yes, I get, I am able to think of so many different things all at once, just like a lot of women are able to think about many, many, many different opinions, thoughts, feelings, Time all lines. quite quickly. I feel like that's also because I am visual as well as being feminine yeah. and then men being single focused as well as Charlie being very in touch with his feelings and really likes to feel into things. It means his process of answering a question is a lot slower and so he'll just sit and be quiet for a moment and then I'm just sitting there which feels like a minute like a solid minute of no talking and I'm sure it's maybe like 10 seconds but that's a long time sometimes and so just over the years that we've been together we've like slowly realized Mm. like the moment that I'm being patient with you, there's so many things going through my head. (laughs) So I just like keep myself entertained up there until you're ready to answer. (laughs) Sometimes Mia will walk into a room, ask me a question. I'll be thinking of it, like about to answer. Then she's doing other tasks around the house. Then she comes back and gets the answer from me. Yeah. (laughs) So it's like, yeah, the questions I asked you, there's like so many different dynamics that play out. I don't know if you've heard me. Then now that you've heard me, I don't know if you're going to answer it. I don't know if you're thinking about it. I don't know if the conversation's complete. I don't know if you're done with the conversation. Like there's so many timelines that it could be. Yeah, there is so So, many intricacies in your relationship. mm -hmm. And Mir and I are master coaches in neuro-linguistic programming. And part of that is learning rep systems. So everyone has a preferred way they want to take in information. So your whole life right now is built up of five things. Your five senses, right? It's what you see, what you hear what you touch, what you taste, and what you feel. That is your whole experience from your first breath till your last. That's everything, right? 
well, humans have an inner voice, that's a sick thing. And everyone has a different way they want to take in that information. And me is very visual. And there's a different way that visuals operate. They're a lot faster. They move faster. They make decisions faster. They want everything now. So they can struggle with patience. Whereas I'm more kinesthetic, which is more of the feeling type. So I can feel deeply into my emotions a lot more. But I'm a lot slower with making decisions a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. And jumping on calls with couples and realizing what rep systems they are. Like I jumped mm -hmm. on a call with... Um, this couple and this exact situation was playing out where she was a visual. She would say things and her, she wouldn't care about her tonality, but the man would feel that so much and feel criticized. So it's like teaching the woman that, hey, your tone is really important. Being patient is really important because he's feeling into the decision right now. He's wanting patience right now and that makes him feel loved. And just those basic things of having awareness around that made mm. such a big difference. Yeah, and it's like, that was a massive learning piece for me as well it's like something that I said at the beginning of this podcast is like not only do people not understand the opposite sex but a lot of the time they don't actually even fully understand themselves they don't understand mm -hmm. why they see the world th this certain way they don't understand why they believe certain things they don't understand why they react to certain things a certain way and a massive thing for them to learn is the rep system. It's like the way that I view the world is quite different to the way Charlie sees the world, the way that Charlie mm. reacts to things, things like being kinesthetic and a lot more in his feelings and emotions is something that I get to learn from him because at the beginning of the relationship, I wasn't as in tuned and in touch with my emotions. I was a lot more thought, get stuff done, visual, moving fast, yeah, um, say more masculine, like you were so feminine and beautiful on the outside, yeah. but a lot of time you were operating in the masculine of get shit done, turn up to work, pressure, stress. Yeah, and I feel like that'd be a really interesting episode to dive more into that mm. as well. However, yeah, very much I lived most of my life in my masculine energy. However, it's like I always, my mum taught me so well, like how to be polite and how to dress really feminine and beautiful and present myself so I'd present myself very feminine with long hair, makeup, dresses, things like that. However, internally, I was acting very masculine in all areas of life. Yeah. Like I wasn't super receptive to receiving or being, which is very feminine energies or creative. It was very just ignore all of that and get stuff done acting as single focus, even that my mind wasn't single focused. Mm. Um, so there's a lot to relationships yeah. and that's something we want to, like, that's our main focus of taking this information, like taking everything we learned from spending like 60 K on personal development, being in shitty relationships, being in great relationships, all the clients we've coached and simplifying that into a process where you can implement that in your relationship and see the biggest difference. Like you don't have to read hundreds of books. You don't have to invest all this money in personal development. You get to just learn the tools on that. So that's the biggest thing we want to teach people. Yeah. Cool. And it can yeah. sound, yeah, it can seem really confusing when we're talking about it on the podcast sometimes when we talk about so many different things at once. However, that's why we did create the program and like the program itself goes through three different phases of awareness, the tools and the build. And we really break down like pretty much everything that we just said about like kinesthetics, things like that Yeah. But in the program. So it is a so much clearer step-by-step -step process for you yeah. to go through. And I'll pop that link in the show notes below if you want to check that out and really have a step-by-step -step instruction on how to build a great relationship. Yeah, that's great. Makes it really simple. Cool. Number five is have golden retriever energy. Mia wrote this one down. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Yeah, so I love this one. Have golden retriever energy. This is something that you don't hear that often in, from coaches or from... Um, self-help stuff so self-help things however it is I think if you go back many many years there's a couple coaches that like relationship coaches that say this which I love it's be the golden retriever and have that golden retriever energy it's like when you see a dog when you when you have a dog at home for example and you leave the house the moment that you come back that dog is so excited to see you they're so happy they're jumping on you they're like wanting to give you so many hugs and kisses is it because it's like that dog loves you so much and it's in those moments when you come home you realize wow I feel so important like I feel so important to this person which makes me feel so important I feel so loved because 
I can tell how much this dog loves me. And so then you refer that on to even like your partner coming home. It's like you want to make sure that your partner knows how much you love him and how much you care for him and how much he means to you. And a lot of the time, it's not just what you say, but it's your actions that show it. And it's having this type of golden retriever energy that helps him see how much you love and appreciate him. So it's like every time Charlie comes home, even when he goes to the gym and comes back, when he goes to the store and comes back, I always come and say hello. I always greet him at the door. Mm. I always be like, oh, hey, how'd you go? Like, I always give him a hug and I always give him a kiss. How did you sleep? What did you dream about? Like being interested? Yeah, it's like genuinely being interested in the other person and excited and happy because it's like, you can take this advice for like any person that you see, even on the streets or like your friends, for example. Mm. It's like every time you see them, if you're like, oh my God, hi, it's so good to see you. It's like your vibration is so- Oh my God, I love your dress. Where did you get that? Oh my God, what did you get up to yesterday? Oh, what, you did that? That's so cool. Tell me about that. Mm. It's like when you're interested in the other person, it makes the conversation so much better, right? Yeah, exactly. Amazing. Um, yeah, cut you off. I got excited. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I was like, yeah, be a golden retriever. Um, yeah, when you're genuinely excited, when you, something I love about you, you just like, you just leak love. <laughs> I didn't know the best adjective to use there. Yeah. Um, I feel like I just have a lot of love for everything in the world. So I just... Love just oozes out of you. Like mm-hmm. yesterday, a bird landed on our window. And today and, I was in today. the bedroom and it came up. It yeah, even sweet. that. And you're just like, oh, hi, birdie. Oh my God, you're so mm-hmm. loved. Hi. You can hang around for a bit. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, like I... everything you're so maiden in that of like, so soft and feminine and you want everyone mm. to feel loved and including me like you always just walk up to me and cuddle me and say oh you're so handsome oh how is the gym oh you look great and this just really encapsulates everything we spoke about so far it's like make him feel useful give him compliments ask for his opinion realize he's single focus so having patience and then the golden retriever energy is just encapsulating all that of just like can you be more loving in yourself be more interested in Oh my god, that's getting me so much. Is this thing still going? Okay, yeah, you can just hold it. Um, it? Yeah, yeah, I'll just hold it for a bit. (laughs) The microphone just fully like collapsed on us. (laughs) That's funny. Yeah, but just can you be more loving in your relationship together? And yeah, just raise the vibe, you know? Yeah, I did have something I wanted to say on that. And then yeah, you go. The mic thing happened. Yeah. (laughs) The mic thing really just took the attention, hey? Yeah, 100%. Okay, yeah, what I was going to say is... It's like by doing all the, all of these five steps, I've noticed it's like this is something that I've just naturally done within the relationship mm. over the time that we've been together. And I've seen the more that I do it, Charlie has naturally adapted the same energy towards yeah, it. Yeah, energy towards it. It's like so Charlie will naturally ask like, oh, you like would never ask like, oh, how did you sleep? What did you dream about? Like, yeah, I, I would never I ask. So... I'm so not interested in dreams. But then Mia started asking me about them. I was just like, oh, this feels great. Like we're having a conversation. Mm, it's like a, such a great conversation first thing in the morning. And so I've naturally, like Charlie has naturally started adapting that, even that it was never your natural thing to ask certain yeah. questions in the morning and things like that. So it's like the more useful he makes, the more useful he, you make him feel, the more love and happiness he will share back to you within the relationship in different aspects and show you how much he appreciates you. And then the second one of, give him compliments the more compliments that he gives you the more (laughs) happy that he will overall be and naturally the more compliments I've given you the more compliments you have given me over the time Mm -hmm. and it's not because I give you a compliment and then you give me one back it's just naturally just in our awareness now to share that appreciation for each other Mm, the more energy you put in the more energy you get out yeah you put more effort into your physical health you will become fitter you put more energy into your relationship, there will be more love there. Exactly. If you do it in the right way, right? Yeah. And then step number three was ask for his opinion. It's like by you asking for his opinion, you are naturally getting you both to have more of a collaborative conversation, which will naturally incline him to also potentially start asking you questions for a more collaborative environment and conversations there. And Mm -hmm. this doesn't happen automatically. It starts happening over time after you start doing this frequently enough. And then also realizing that he's single focused, he'll start realizing that the conversations that you guys have is a lot more 
calmer and a lot more mellow because men are single focus and women just think of a hundred things at once. And that really does come across in the way that we talk to people as well mm. and the converse, the conversation structure that we have. So, yeah, I posted a quote on Instagram. It was men want to experience peace in the relationship. Women want to experience reassurance in the relationship. Most relationships experience neither. Yeah. It's such it a true so thing because they don't know. Like if you give your man peace and if you learn how he operates by using what you learned today, then you'll probably get more reassurance. You probably learn how each other operate. So yeah, make him feel useful, give him compliments, ask for his opinion, realize he's single focus, have golden retriever energy. Mia Cherry would love to hear what is your, what are you looking forward to this week? What's something you're excited about? So this weekend is the long Easter weekend. So yeah, we film these podcasts maybe a week or two in advance. So this week for Easter, we are going to the Sunshine Coast and spending it with like my aunties, my cousins, my mom. So I'm really excited for um, just a nice family weekend Hmm. of just like relaxing and just being in the moment. Yeah. I'm excited to be in the moment more. I feel like something I've been doing is consuming too much, like too many audio books, YouTube videos, constantly listening to music, constantly reading, where it's like, fuck, I know so much information. I've read hundreds of books. I've listened to so many books. I've listened to so many podcasts. I don't need to know any more information. I think just spending time in my head and giving myself thinking time, Mm -hmm. listening to my own thoughts rather than everyone else's thoughts is something I'm really focused on this week. So I'm really excited for that. Just give myself space. Yeah. Yeah. The more we go about life, the more I just want a simple life of like move to the woods, <laughs> build a big family, just <laughs> chill out. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much for listening. And if you're wanting help, we'll pop the link below to the relationship program. Or if you want to jump on a free 30 minute call with us, I'll pop that link below so you can jump on, talk to us for 30 minutes, have an outside expert's opinion on your situation to really help you move past whatever you're going through right now. And If you like this podcast and you really want to help us grow it, leave a review if you're on Spotify or leave a comment if you're on YouTube or leave a review if you're on Apple. It really helps us grow the podcast and gives us feedback. So thank you so much for listening every week and we can't wait to see you next week. Thank you guys so much.